Rub up your engines! Okay, Toyota Venzas. They made them, they stopped making them, now they're making them again. Now this particular one is a hybrid, kind of a crossover SUV. People are always arguing over what they actually are, but to me they're kind of a crossover SUV. This one is a hybrid, you can see it came from CarMax. As we look under here, put a little flashlight on, you can see it's all wheel drive. It's got rear drives and front drives. If you really want the truth about Venza, it's basically a Toyota Camry SUV. And they share all kinds of stuff. And to me, it's only logical. Why not make a Camry SUV? People like Camrys, but they say I want an SUV. Well, get a Venza. It's a Camry SUV. So it's reliable, but it gets great gas mileage. You can get between 40 and 45 miles a gallon on the highway. And if you're wondering, this dirt was put on here deliberately because they're Hindus. And they want to keep from getting in accidents. So they put different symbols on different parts. If you notice, in the side view mirrors, this isn't the result of wild children in mud. Turmeric. It definitely is. You can taste it. As you go under the hood, got a four-cylinder gasoline engine. It has the electric motor and battery system. Now, it's not a plug-in hybrid. It's a normal hybrid. It's made to get better gas mileage and to boost the power a little because, of course, Americans all want to go fast, so they want to have an SUV that's got zip. And if you've been in any of the Camrys, they got the same zip because it's the same platform, basically. Just different metal on the top to make it into an SUV. If anybody knows how to build a hybrid car, it's definitely Toyota. Go inside. Right now it's running. We can see it has all kinds of electronic controls. Traction control off if you want. You can even put it in EV mode if you want to drive a short distance in electric mode. But this isn't a plug-in hybrid, so you're not going to go that far. You can only drive up to 25 miles an hour in electric mode. And it won't go very far. Last one I tried, I got about a mile and a half. and turned the motor back on. The batteries are not made to propel the car. They're a boost system. Of course, it sounds solid like a Camry. You can see. The seats are very comfortable. A lot of room, leg room in the back. It's rather small, it's trunk. It is more or less a compact crossover. It's got a panoramic view system to look around when you're driving. You can play around with different views of cars. Since it can be driven in electric mode and be quiet, it makes this kind of space age sound <laughs> that you're going down the road. Now, it might confuse some people. They might think that there's like angels coming to get them or something. I don't know. That's what it sounds like to me. Here come the angels. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming to get you. Your time on Earth is over. And like any hybrid system, it shows you what's going on with the battery and the engine and the drive wheels. So basically, you're getting a compact SUV crossover Toyota Camry. Everybody knows how dependable they are. It's just the problem with the SUV market is it is cramped with so many different different types of vehicles, there's so much competition, it's a hard sell in the market. That's why they stopped making these, but then they decided, oh, that's a mistake. People want Camry SUVs, and they went back to making them. Now, he's got 50,000 miles on it. He wants to see what kind of shape it's in, so do I, so we get the old computer out. It's a hybrid, but it's got the same OBD plug, normal car has. So we'll swipe down, swipe up, and while it's doing its thing, there's some more turmeric here. Sitting on a steering wheel. Okay, it's a Venza HV. North America. Needs to know a lot of information here. The Venza HV 2021. And yes, so soon we'll be into diagnosis mode. Now it's 100% done. We got a few minor flaws here. We'll see. Tire pressure monitor. Okay. It has the tire pressure monitor transmitter ID is 3 is missing. So number three is missing, meaning that one of the tire sensors has gone bad or the battery's gone bad. Power window switch on left rear door fault. Strange enough, it's still working. Now I've seen people where they'll be holding it too long. If you hold it too long, it'll trip a stupid code like that. So we're going to erase it and then I road test, see if any of it comes back. And he's worried since it's a hybrid, so we'll look at some of the hybrid data. A lot of information in these hybrids. Look at that. Make your head spin. Now I push the button on, you got to get used to it. You don't hear anything because the hybrid mode's going. Here comes the noise. We're backing up. We should got a good backup sight. Even though we got sun glaring in our eyes, we can still see it. You can see his average there. He's getting 45.1 miles a gallon. Pretty good gas mileage for an SUV especially. Now you see as soon as we got around 20, the motor kicked in. You can't go that far in electric stuff all along. Got nice handling here. I have to say it's one of the better handling SUVs I've been in. It's just regenerating electricity. There it is. 
shows you it's regenerating now. We're slowing down. It does slow down a little when you take your foot off the gas, but it's nothing like one of those Teslas that you take your foot off the gas that really starts slowing down. It kind of freaks you out. This is relatively normal. It's not outrageous. So I take my foot off the gas. It slows down gradually, but it's not like a Tesla that will come to a jerk and halt. You still have to use the brakes to completely stop. And here we go to the little drag strip in the sky. We'll see how much energy this four-cylinder engine with an electric motor boost has. We can see there's nobody behind us. Here we go. It picks them up and puts them down pretty good. Now I do have to say that the CVT transmission, I road tested one of the new Subaru Outbacks and it had a CVT transmission in it really had a better shift ability to it now technically they don't shift gears it's pretending anyways but I like that Subaru CVT better than this one because when you floor this you can hear it's revving high the whole time until you take your foot off the gas but with the Subaru it was more like a regular automatic transmission I actually like the Subaru CVT much better than this it certainly tracks down the road good it's swerving itself by itself I let go look it's driving itself down the road see it's following the road by itself watch what happens when it goes over see it stared itself <laughs> I don't know if I'd trust that in regular driving, but there's not too many people on this road and it's not that fast. Just out of curiosity, let's see what it does on this curve. Nobody's coming. Let's see if it steers. It's steering the curve. Look, all by itself. Let's see what it does on the other side, though. It's going to hit that tree or is it going to... Now it's going to hit the tree. <laughs> it didn't work too good the other way. Like I say, I don't trust those things. Me, I keep my hands on the wheel, or at least one hand on the wheel. I'm filming with the other one at the present moment. You can't hear much with the road noise, but there are speakers on the outside of the car making that noise. You can see now the battery is boosting the acceleration. If I take my foot, it'll go the other way. Take my foot off, now the battery's recharging. You want to give it a little gas, this thing's fun to drive. I got the window open for some air, and hey, it's a fun little SUV to drive around. It's kind of like my wife's Matrix on steroids. So there you have it, the Toyota Venza. This one's a hybrid. The Toyota Camry of SUVs. It's a very crowded segment. They stopped making them, then they started making them again. I think they made a mistake not making them and then starting again, they should have just kept making them. If somebody wants a vehicle this size, could run virtually forever. I've seen Camry hybrids with 350,000 miles on them that were still running fine. Not a hybrid fan myself, but Toyota makes the best hybrids out there as far as I'm concerned. You only get that kind of gas mileage in an SUV. That's basically the only way you can go. They're not too aerodynamic. And to get 45 miles a gallon of highway on one of these things, it's kind of a minor miracle for something that's as zippy and fun to drive as this thing is. And the only problem with this car was it's not big enough for the average American. Americans want big, 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 three rows of seats, gigantic engines and huge vehicles. And this isn't as big. But a Toyota Camry SUV, if you ask me, it's a brilliant idea. If you're looking for an SUV that you can drive forever that gets phenomenal gas mileage, Hey, you check one of these out. Now you know quite a bit more about it. Guy's driven at 50,000 miles. Hey, any problems? No problems, of course. It's based on a Toyota Camry. If you want something this size, it's definitely something you should look at. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Aaron Lopez said, should I buy a diesel truck for towing? I create a small construction limited liability corporation. Should I get a diesel or a gas truck? If you're going to tow stuff, you're much better off with diesel. A gasoline truck will get horrendous gas mileage towing and it will wear out a lot faster. If you get a comparable truck, like say a Ford truck with gas and a Ford truck with diesel, if you're pulling a heavy load, the diesel might still get... 12, 13 miles a gallon, right? But the gasoline truck will get six if it's pulling the heavy load. It's not made for towing. The diesels have a lot of torque. They're going to last a lot longer. Of course, the downside is the diesel costs a lot more money. Look at the price differential. But if you've got a serious business, you need a diesel truck. Forget the gasoline trucks. They're not made for towing heavy weights. They can pull them, but over a long distance and long times, they're going to wear out faster. And you're going to use so much more fuel, it'll make your head spin. And diesels are made for towing. That's why all the big 18 wheelers on the road are diesel and not gasoline trucks. They cost more, but they're made for towing. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!